Father, we, we, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord, that you have given us to be here, Lord, to worship you and praise you and lift you up, O oh God. Father God, we ask that you bless labor of the field. Bless every single one of us here, Lord. Bless labor of the field and I, but also, Father God, anoint your anointed one, Father God, to preach your word tonight, Father God. We ask, Lord God, that you will multiply, Father God, this offering, that you will bless in abundance, Father God, to everyone here present for your glory, Lord. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Thank you, Lord. We give you glory. Amen. 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 This is our special guest tonight. Let's give him a hand for coming. We want you to come back. Woo! I said you preach. We're trying to get you to come down and preach on Friday night. Okay? Okay. It's about Jesus, though. It takes a willing vessel to do anything for Jesus. Okay? It takes real men to serve God. If you ain't serving God, you ain't real men. I want to read a little something to you tonight. We're going to do short service. we got a long day tomorrow. It's going to be a lot of work. I want everybody to come to the lake. We're going to have free hamburgers, free hot dogs, and swimming and riding on the cubes. And if the boat goes up, we've been working hard. We're running a little bit of time on the boat. But if it works out, we'll see who, we'll see who the cube master is. Little David was last year. He couldn't get him off of it. But we'll see. Pray that everybody keeps a safe day, has a safe day. That's a fun, fun day with a good, clean, sound mind. That's what we want to show you, how much fun you can have. Amen. You know, for years, I couldn't have fun unless I was all tanked up on both or drinking or a little bit of everything. Come on, everybody. I want you to know that you can have more fun with a good, clean mind than you will ever have. Amen. Drinking or drugging. Amen. You know, I can remember the last five years of my life when I was doing what I was doing. I know I needed help. But I was too ashamed to stand up and ask for it. One night, I remember sitting in my recliner and I was praying, God, I got to do something. And uh, I got a live verse and I want to share it with y'all now. It's Psalms 40. It says, I, verse 1 says, I waited patiently for the Lord to help me. And he turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the pit, out of despair, out of the mud, out of the mall. He set my feet on the ground, on yeah. solid rock, and steadied me as walk along. He has given me a new song to sing, a hymn of praise to our Lord. Many will see what he has done and worship the Lord and trust the Lord. Listen to me. I was so deep in the mar and the mud and the clay that I couldn't jump out, man. I couldn't ever get out of it. Yeah couldn't get out. I thought, man, I'm stuck here and I'll never get out of it. I'll tell you something. I don't know who I'm talking to now. There's somebody here that needs to hear this. You are in some mess which the God can pull you out of. It can set you free. It can break the chains of bondage that's on your neck that you, you just toting around and you barely can't walk. You can't tote it no more. You've been doing it so long. And look, we all got secrets in our lives that nobody knows about. All, we all got things that when bad things come our way, we want to run back and meditate ourselves. And that's just a human nature. It's just human nature. But when you got something bad coming up in your life, you got to learn how to trust and lean on God more and more and more and more. And if you learn how to do that, things will get better. Life will be different. You'll have a peace without any understanding. How can I get through this? Just walk right through it like I ain't nothing. And that means you don't hear. It's meaning God's happy and giving you strength, wisdom, and courage. Yes. Don't that work for nothing? It works. A lot of times when tragedy happens, a lot of people go way left. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of you. Proud of you. You've done a good job. Yeah. If one day you're going to be there with your sister, you're going to be with Tyson, and you're going to find out why they took 
He done it for a reason. I know he did. You know he did. It, but we can't understand death sometimes. You know, we all got to die. We all got to face death. But you better be ready. Amen. You best Amen. be ready. Let me tell you something, guys. The guys that's in the program, we got like 30 guys out here. God sent you here. You ain't just here by no mistake. He sent you down here to find out where you're at in life, to find out if you can start a one-on-one -on -one relationship with God. He's down here to spiritually heal you from the inside out. Each and every one of you. And if you can take advantage of this program, you got a lot of freedom here. We ain't gonna put up no junk. We ain't serious about what you're gonna ask to leave. But if you're serious, you can come down here and change your life and be a real man. Amen. Real man Amen. serve God. Amen. And that's what we want you to do. And uh, what I want to do tonight is uh, give a few testimonies. I just give mine. <laughs> You know, I got 32 years of my life probably. John 10.10 10 says, The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But the Lord says, I come to give you life. And give you life more abundantly. He's given me life again more abundantly. I, I, hey, this year I've been attacked in all kinds of ways, man. I've, I've caught myself in a backslide spin. But hey, listen to me. If you ever get saved, you can't live no other way. You cannot live. Everybody says, well, I don't believe in that once saved, always saved. The reason you probably don't believe that because you might not be saved. Amen. If you ever taste the goodness of God, you ain't going to be able to live no other way. That's right. what I believe. Right. Everybody Amen. believes different. I believe the same thing because I haven't tasted the goodness of God and I ain't perfect today, but I serve a God that's perfect. Amen. And he's washed, I'm washed by his blood makes me perfect. And that don't give me the right to go out here and do what I want to do. That don't give me the right if I fall down and I can't get up. He just don't help me right back up and hold my hand to it. That's the kind of God we serve. I want to do a few testimonies tonight. And I want you to just stand up and tell about what God's done in your life. What he's done through labors and feel here in your life. Or just, just praise God. I want some people to come up and give you testimonies. Who would like to go first? Come on. Hey, y'all, when they put the tunnel, uh, I'll tell you, I didn't start all following God. I just see I followed him before. And, uh, this is going to come alive on July 4th, 2006. Uh, uh, you know, I can see it for real. I didn't even know who I had. I didn't know who I had. I fall into it more and mess up in and in your hands and get away like Jim, like it says in the song, but like Jim sit, sitting away and all of a sudden, I'm going to go down the road. I'm going to go in. Amen. 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 Said, you 
She said, your name's John Prince. Well, when I first got saved, everybody called me Johnny Prince all my life. And, uh, and I did start calling myself John. But, you know, uh, that's one of the things I wanted to share tonight. I just wanted to share a few things that, that not really my testimony, but it's, uh, it's things that happened uh, during my journey with the Lord. And, 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 it, and it somewhat is three or four little mini testimonies, I guess you could say, is uh, some things that helped me a whole lot from, uh, uh, since, I've, uh, since I came to know the Lord. But after walking with the Lord for 15 years, uh, you know, uh, I had bought you know, a couple of houses, and, and I guess the first mistake that I made, Ralph, the first mistake that I made was... Uh, I was working full time at the Haven Rest, and uh, well, I cut back the part time. And then after cutting back the part time, I cut back to being a weekend supervisor. So it went from like a 40, 50, 60 hour a week to a 20 or 30 hour a week to a, to a 16 hour weekend. And, uh, and, um, uh, and I started, uh, uh, I had, I had uh, uh, <coughs> started cutting a few yards of grass. When I was making it, 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 was, it was a decent salary, but uh, I know that I could make me some extra income by cutting grass and, and uh, climbing trees and doing what I like to do. And, and, uh, and that's, uh, that's when I, one day I walked to see him. And see him told me, he said, Johnny, I believe you're making a mistake. He said, you go ahead and do what you think you're going to do. Go ahead and do what you, you think you're going to do. But you stay plugged into this ministry. Whatever you do, don't get too far away from this ministry. And so uh, I never have gotten too far away from that ministry. But I remember a time that I couldn't go around them. I couldn't face them. I couldn't look at them in the eyes. If you ever see a man get up here can't look out there in your eyes, I don't know. You know what I mean? Look here. All the stuff, that's all I'm going to say about that. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I, I was just making all kind of money. And and and, uh, and I left the Hagen Ranch. I think that was the first thing that I did that, that I shouldn't have done. And then I started hanging around a couple of different people that I might not have should have been hanging around. And then you let a standard down over here that that you once held in high regard. And and uh and then you start fudging a little bit here, fudging a little bit there. And the first thing you know, you have your cotton picking self down yonder on one of them back streets doing something that you ain't got no business doing. And it don't take but a skinny minute. About 30 minutes from now, I can have myself slapped, messed up. And the rest of us in here can too. And uh, we not only do that, we not only do that in action sometimes, sometimes we, sometimes we do it in here. If they put up over that cross is, what's went through my mind today? My Lord. That's when I wouldn't be able to look you in the eyes. That's when I wouldn't be able to look you in the eyes. If you know what goes through some of our heads sometimes, uh, whether, you know, it just ain't no count. It ain't no count. But I said that to say this, y'all. The same way I let all them things creep back into my life. And uh, one day, I walked out my driveway and I started doing some things that I shouldn't have done. And, and there, you, there, you, there you think again, was that something I was wanting to do already? I think in actuality that, that, that sometimes that, that uh, it wasn't something I don't think I was wanting to do already. I mean a junkie. He don't wake up one morning and think I'm going to go get a shot of dope today. And uh, it don't happen like that. It progressively, progressively happens. 
as you go along in life. First you, uh, my first thing was red man, and I still have a dicking problem. I still have a dicking problem. And I had a smoking problem before I had a dipping problem. And uh, and uh, I don't think I think that's just an open door for something else. And and and, and, and you might say, what's one can of beer gonna hurt? What's one can of beer gonna hurt? If you keep it one can of beer. But I ain't never seen a time that I wanted no one can of beer. And um and I think those little things can start. You start entertaining them. You start entertaining them and making it okay in your head. And, and you start um, uh, you start justifying some things that you used to wouldn't even justify. When you first came to know the Lord and you head over hills in love with Jesus and, and you're walking right and you're talking right and you're doing right. And uh, But sometimes, uh, just like we post to progress in our Christian walk, in our Christian life on this journey, we can deep degress. We can go backwards. The first thing you know, we're in a tailspin. And and that's some of the things that and, and, and we've all had problems. We've all had problems with it. And I just wanted to say a few things up here tonight that that that, that might help you. Uh, look here. During that uh, like I told you, I walked with the Lord for fifteen years. I went out in my driveway with this cat, and uh, it was about three years, two or three years of this. Like Bernard said before we go, you ain't gonna never be happy. You ain't gonna never be the same once you've tasted the things of God. I know good and well that day I walked down my driveway, Sam, and I might, I might not be back here again. I know that there's a good possibility that uh, that uh, that uh, he, you know, he, he, I think he'll take our life sometimes to save our soul. Sometimes, and uh, I think that that that, and, and, and sometimes I made the excuse. Look, well, uh, uh, he could he could be doing in my life, Brian. What he's doing in my life, if I hadn't went back out there and experienced what I experienced 15 years later after I've been walking with the Lord. And I know he's done some things in my life that that wouldn't have been done if I had to stay walking with God. If I had to stay walking with God. But let me tell you, I don't give you no excuse to uh, I don't give you no excuse to run out there. And say God's in something He ain't really in. He takes the crazy things that you do and He uses them for His good. He uses them for His good. And He can take a John Deere tractor. He can take a bulldog and bring you to salvation. He can do anything He wants to. He, 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 he's God. But anyway, my first cousin died. During this two or three years or whatever it was, my first cousin died, y'all. And I tried my best, I tried my best to get straight so I could go to her funeral. I mean, I used to live with her when I was a little baby. And uh, I tried to get straight, I couldn't get straight. I couldn't get straight. And I think that's when I realized in my head I was going to have to go somewhere and get myself to hell. I, you know, we think we can do something on our own sometimes. We think we can do things on our own sometimes. And, uh, and we can, probably for a little while. Uh, but uh, if you want it to take, you need God to help you. You need to ask God to come in inside of you and do something in you that you can't do for yourself. That's what you need to do. But um, uh, anyway, I jotted I jotted down down a few little things here that um uh, that uh, that I wanted uh, that I wanted to talk about. Well, that's Tony Keaton's book. Tony Keaton, me and Tony and Vernon both of us went to um. Uh, Johnny Hunt's men in Atlanta. And uh, one of the breakout speakers, one of the breakout speakers, uh, talked about reading your proverb every morning when he got up out of bed, reading your proverb. He said, reading that proverb wasn't what made the change in his life. He said, applying that proverb to his life is what made the change in his life. Uh, putting that proverb in his life is what made the change in his life. 
And uh, and so, uh, anyway, here I am today, y'all, and I'm just so glad to be here. I'm just so glad to be here. Good to hear. Uh, uh, we, we, we can think we all listen to Box Cracker Jack sometime, but if we anything, it's what God put in us. It's what He made us to be. If 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 I want to if I want to be a if I want to be a good stepdad to Ashley, if I want to have a good stepdaughter, I got I got to be a good stepdad. If I want to have good friends, I got I got to be a good friend. If I want good neighbors, I got to be a good neighbor. I got to treat you like I want to be treated. And uh, I would not take nothing for the Haven Rats or the Labor of other people. I would not take nothing for men's ministry. I would not take nothing for where the Lord has put me at in my life. I don't get to be down here like I like I like I want to be, like I was when I worked on the staff at the Haven Rats because I gotta make a living. I gotta make a living in and uh, and uh, me and Vernon has talked about this over and over and over again that, that we don't have a shelter for the for the men run it themselves. And uh, and two, uh, I can remember being at the Haven Rest for about two or three weeks, and uh, the staff wanted me to eat with them. I wasn't on staff; I was resident like everybody else. But I could tell the little whispers and the little, uh, you know, he thinks he's, he thinks he's better than us. He's eating with them, and they eating different kind of food. They got <laughs> supper meal already, and we eat the pinto beans. And that's what we had every day up there at the Haven Rest. We had a uh, we had uh, pinto beans on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we had vegetable soup on Tuesday and Thursday. And, uh, and some days I think about it, and I want some of it right now. I didn't get tired of it. I didn't bellyache about it. Uh, who was out of bellyache? Who was out of bellyache? Get people let me stay there when nobody else didn't want me. They let me stay there when, it, when everybody else had done given up, given up on me. I can remember when my daddy got saved. I was living at the Haven. My daddy got saved. He asked me to come live with him. My sight, my sight. He ain't never asked me to come live with him. Cause I wasn't a good influence on my little brothers. I wasn't. I wasn't. I didn't do right. I wouldn't act right. And uh, but uh, uh, I, I I just uh, I guess that's all I got. I reckon. Let's have a good day tomorrow, y'all. And uh, and uh, hey, if I can ever ever hit you like like, like 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 like, let me say one more thing. Brian talked last night about you know give three things to the Lord. I'm gonna put this a little bit of a different twist on that, Brian. He said give three things to the Lord. I say this. I said take them three things. Say one of them. Say one of them is dipping. Say one of them you like to buy a lottery ticket. And say to other you, maybe you got to have it looking stuff on your phone and you ain't got no bed to look at it. Let me say them three things. One of them things ain't a big deal to you. You can go in the store and get you a Coca-Cola and you can take a ticket or leave it. Put that in. Give that one to the Lord. It ain't a big deal. You don't care what you do or not, no way. You do that one thing that, that, that it ain't a big deal to you, the Lord will help you. Heck, you with one of them other things that is poking at you and probing at you and gnawing at you and clawing at you and, and trying to get you to buddy up with him. He'll hit you with one of them other things that's a little bit harder for you. And, and once he does that, he'll hit you with that other thing. But you got to make a step. you got to take a step. you got to take a step. And that's a little twist. I wanted to give that little twist last night. I said, well, I would say that to some other time, but that was a good message here. That Brian brought last night, and uh, he done a real good job. And uh, and you know, uh, uh, I just want to tell y'all I love y'all, and I care about you, and I think about you a whole lot. And I try to think about things that's going to help you, something that helped me along my way. Cause I stayed in the same shelter 13 months, 13 months, two different times, and, and worked for 15 years between each one of those times. The people, when I went back the second time, I had to do what people said that I was telling what to do. And that's humbling, y'all. That's humbling. That's humbling yourself 
Uh, <laughs> uh, I used to tell them what to do. Now they were telling me what to do. And, uh, you know, you just got to suck it up and do what you know you got to do. And uh, the Lord's that important to me. You know, I'm going to make a difference. If I'm going to be here, and if I'm going to have food, y'all fellas, there's going to be a difference in my life. My life's going to be different. I ain't going to be here shucking and jiving. I'm going to be real. And uh, I got issues in my life right now. Everybody has. If you say you ain't got an issue in your life, that's probably your issue. You're a liar. <laughs> oh, man. Well, uh, look here. I know y'all fellas got plenty to say, something to say that's going to help that man next to you. You got something to say? It, 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 it's, it's, it just needs to get off your chest. I know you do, fellas. Uh, I, want, I, want, I want to see more participation. But if you want to hate the rest, you're going to participate. Come over here. And uh, we're a little lax down here. we got a smoking area. Uh, uh, you know, when I first went to the Haven Rest, there were seven people there, eight people there. And it ain't nothing like it is now. And I like the way it's grown. I like what they do. I like all of the uh, board members that, that a group of men get together and they talk about stuff and they knock stuff around. To see what's going to help people, and uh, and uh, we need to be productive in society. It's like Vernon said. It's like Ty said. Uh, let's give more back to God than we did did to the devil. Uh, let's uh, let's go. Uh, hey, when you out there in the streets, you beg, borrow, bomb, steal, scheme, connive, manipulate, and you can still find a hundred ways to get what you want to get. How come we can't do that for God? Huh? We can. I thought we can't do that for God. Anyway, somebody, somebody come up here and get this thing. <laughs> come on, y'all. Somebody come give a testimony. I want to see some of y'all fellas come up here and give a testimony. There she go. She come. Ladies first. Good evening, everyone. I just wanted to. I just want to let y'all know, um, if my husband and I, we've only been here like about 10 months, 11 months coming. Um, I just wanted to let y'all know um, the reason why I go crazy over here and I'm loud. <laughs> the reason why is because there was a time in my life where I was really lost without the Lord. Um, really really lost without the lord um, i received my the lord my lord you know when i was 18 years old but um then i backslid and left him and went doing things that were not supposed to be done i abandoned the lord man and i regretted it i regret every every day every moment every second leaving the lord there was times in my life where it was so hard for me and the Lord helped me through it. Um, There's times where I partied and drank hard liquor and was messed up for a while. If it wasn't by, by the grace of God, I wouldn't be here. Amen? And if you see me, you say, oh, that's impossible. She can't have been like that before yes because you know what we all have issues we all have issues we're not perfect that's why jesus christ had to come down to the cross and give his life spill every bit of blood in his body for you and for me amen he put it all out there he laid it all out for us amen and i am really thankful because the Lord pulled me out. <coughs> I remember one time, you know, the Lord pulled me out of the situation. I said, Lord, you know, I cried out to the Lord. I had left him and I said, Lord, I said, if you get me out of this situation right now, I ask, Lord, you pull me out of here, Lord, I'll serve you. I'll serve you, Lord. And the Lord pulled me out of that situation. Amen? Amen? He allowed me to move over here. 
to South Carolina and I praise the Lord. You know why? Because God had a plan for me here. Amen. I came over here. I rededicated my life to the Lord, 2001. And ever since then, I've been with the Lord. Amen. I don't want to let him go, and I don't want him to let me go either. Amen. 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 Because he's a good God. Amen. He is a good God, and I hold on to him. And that's why... When I come up here, or if I'm back there, even if I'm back there, I love to give him all the praise and all the glory because he deserves it. He deserves our praise. He deserves our worship. He deserves our dedication to him. When we come into his house, we have to be happy. And don't take it for granted. Don't take it. I took it for granted. I grew up in the Lord. When I was 18, I received the Lord as my Savior. And you know what I did? I, I just swang it like, you know, like if you would have brought your best gift that cost you so much money. Can you imagine? You, 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 you put money together and you have this beautiful gift for someone and you lay it out for this person. And it, you, you, you sacrifice for that. Amen? You lay it all down for that gift. Amen? You put all your, your money there. And when you give it to that person, that person says, throws it, I don't want it. Amen. And that's why I hold on to my Lord Jesus Christ. Because to me, to me is my Lord, my Savior, my strength, my tower, my secret place. When I'm going through situations, I go and I get on my knees. Lord, you are my secret place. I hide under the shadow of the Almighty. Amen? Amen. amen. And that's why, amen, I just wanted to let you guys know, keep on going. Don't give up. Don't give up. Keep on going. Keep on pushing. And keep your faith strong in the Lord. Keep on reading the Word and keep your faith and keep your chin up. Amen? Good fight the good fight of faith. Amen? Because you can. I see a room here full of all of us. We are, we are a treasure from heaven. You know that we are miracles from heaven sitting right here. We may think we're not, but we are. We are miracles from heaven because we are surviving. What we're going through, we're surviving in faith. Amen? God bless you and, and, and you have a great evening. Amen? God bless. Uh, everybody knows me. Uh, I'm, most of you have heard part of my testimony and everything. But the biggest thing I've, I've made mistakes and made wrong choices in my life. And that's most of my life. In 1957, long before most of you were born, I made a profession of faith. I didn't take possession of that faith until 1998, when I was flat on my back, so to speak, in the county jail here in Anderson, South Carolina, facing a long time in prison, which I did. But I did it by the grace of God. That's how I survived. Why did I do that? Why did I do that? Because I didn't set a goal for myself. I didn't set a, a, an idea in my head that I can do certain things. I can make my life better. I can do so much for someone else. It was all about me. It was my way of the highway, so to speak. Due to my wrong choices, I lost probably 90% of my family. Some have something to do with me, some don't. But there's one person that I can depend on each and every day. And that's Jesus Christ. Amen. I can't depend on David Dean, uh, a.k.a. Pops. 
I can't depend, depend on Kyle Buck. I can't depend on Greg, um, Bruno, or anybody. Because mankind, including myself, will fail you. One way, shape, or another, man will fail you. And, uh, but there's God Almighty and the Son of, Son of God, Jesus Christ, will never fail you. If there's any turning away from that, you do the turning, he does the turning. And it's like Miriam said, he died on that cross and he shed all the blood in his body. If you read the book of, in the Old Testament, he was beaten by the Romans. Satan tried to kill him before he went to the cross. He was beaten beyond the recognition of a human being. It's like a, taking a piece of cube steak and you take one of those, those ten, what they call tenderizers, and you, just, you beat the car out of it and it looks it's all beat up and everything else. That's basically in my mind, that's what, he, that's what Christ Jesus looked like. But yet, he went to the cross. And this I believe, had the Romans not nailed those three nails into his, into his hands and into his feet, then he would have nailed them there himself. Because it was God's will they died for the sin of this world. So ladies and gentlemen, if you don't set a goal for yourself, then what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Just a day by day thing? I'm going to do this today, I'm going to do that tomorrow. I might read my Bible today, I might read it tomorrow. I might not read it for a week. I'm too busy. I, don't, I ain't got time to read it. I need to go to sleep. I'm tired. <laughs> but I'll tell you one thing. My Bible says if you deny me before man here on this earth, I'll deny you before the angels in heaven. So... I've said this many, many times, and I've said to you guys at the table uh, more times than one. Take your word of the Bible and read it. Apply it to your life. Don't just get the head knowledge up here. Transfer it down in here into your spirit. Transfer it to your spirit. And then, then you can accomplish what you're set to go for. It doesn't make any difference to me what you said it goes for. I mean, if you want to be, you want to be an electrician, you want to be a plumber, you want to be a carpenter, you want to be uh, whatever. You have to set that goal and you have to struggle with it. You have to complete it yourself. And you have to put forth some effort in it. Walking a Christian life is not an easy Life. A lot of people will teach you, say, okay, once you get saved, you ain't got to worry about it. Just come to church, give your money, go on and do what you want to do, when, when you want to do it, how you want to do it. Well, so, you better check yourself because I guarantee you that ain't what God wants you to do. And if you're truly saved, like Vernon said a little while ago, I believe that you're, once you're, once you're saved, if you're truly saved, you ain't going to want to go out back up in that world. I don't care who you are. But if you think, like Brian said, mate, he said last night he talked about a fence. There ain't no fence. My Bible says you're either for me or you're against me. So it's up to, it's up to the individual. And like I said a minute ago, the man sitting back here, the director of this rehab center, he's also a preacher. He can't save you. He can point you to the one that can. And that's that's what we that's what we here are trying to do, you guys. When I came here, I didn't have the habits that some of you guys come here with. 
Do I condemn you for it? Absolutely not, because I was an alcoholic myself. But I dealt with that problem a long time ago. The reason I'm here, because like somebody else said, nobody else would have me. The man sitting right back here said, come on down. And that was in July the 2nd of 2015. I'm still here. I don't know how long I'm going to be here. I'm here. I'm going to stay doing what I've got to do, what God has placed in my heart to do, until He either takes me home or sends me somewhere else. So it's Him I trust. And trust me, it's Him I trust. Fine. Anybody else? I was raised uh, here in Anderson. 
I was going to say I grew up here, but that would be a lie because I haven't grown up and I've been two years old. And I gave my testimony about two weeks ago, so, and I have a good one. If it was not edited, it'd make hair stand up on the back of your neck. I've done a lot of things in my life that uh, I'm not proud of, but uh, this year, well, I started using drugs when I was about 13, but this year, I hit a low in my life that I've never, I've never seen before. And I wasn't homeless, but I lost my home. I was living in a motel room. And I was using, sticking needles in my arm about every day. And if I couldn't find my drug of choice, I was gonna get off on something, you know, weed, beer, whatever, but I was under so much conviction. And it was crazy because when I take that needle out of my arm, my mind would start spinning and I'd be wide open, but I was thinking about God, you know, and I knew that He was dealing with my heart then. So, four rehabs hadn't done it for me, but I knew I had to change, so I went to another Christian rehab, home with the heart. I stayed there for three weeks, they asked me to leave. Can you believe it, Vernon? They said I had a bad attitude. <laughs> they kicked me out because I had a bad attitude. But I came here. And since I got here, you know, I found the Lord Jesus Christ. Well, he found me. But I opened up my heart to Him. And it ain't been all bed of roses for me because I've been here five, six weeks. I have good weeks, good days, bad days. I had the little devil over here on one shoulder whispering in the ear, and a little angel over here in this ear, and I'm battling myself. And there's been a lot of times that I just wanted to quit and leave, go home. And then I got to thinking, what if God said, I'm just going to quit and I'm going to go home? Amen. I'd been in a mess if I'd went home, but if God quit on us, We'd all be in a mess. I spent 10 years of my life in prison. And man, that was like a life sentence to me. Now here I am doing 90 days. Not even halfway there, close, but not, not there yet. And it's been like a life sentence again. But 90 days, man, 90 days. Anybody that knows me knows that I'm a prime example that God's got a sense of humor because I cut up a lot. There's a time to play, there's a time to joke, there's a time to get serious. I'm 52 years old. Your average lifespan, I'll be lucky if I live to be 80, 85. That's just, that's a normal lifespan. I've wasted so much of my life and I should be dead, but I'm not. By the grace of God, He's kept me alive. Now, I don't know what God's plans are for me, but I know that He'll reveal them through this right here if I apply myself to do it. And I'm, I don't judge anybody because I walked in everybody's shoes that's in this program. I went through rehabs with the intentions of just going through it and cruise through it because I know my family would be back backing me up I'd get probation off my back, courts. But when I got out, I truly wasn't happy and I went back and done the things that I've always done. I let my parents down again, but most of all, I let myself down again. I let God down again. And the reason those rehabs didn't work for me because I never applied the Lord in my life. You know, like Brian was saying last night about straddling that fence. Man, I straddle it and I fall bump my head. So, I got to keep my feet planted on one side of the fence. What side am I going to plant it on? I always thought the grass is greener on the other side. Sometimes it is. But, I'm not going to have grass. I'm going to have a street of gold. I'm going to walk on. And, guys, 90 days, 
I had somebody in a rehab tell me once before, just do one thing. Your way of thinking, look where it got you, got you in rehab. Try it God's way for six months and see what changes He will do in your life. If you're not happy after six months, go back doing it your way. That's all I got to say, guys. I love every, every one of you, and I want to see y'all all make it. That was good, Tony. You've heard a lot of stories today. You've heard a lot of people talking from their heart. If there's anybody here, we always have all the talk, ladies and gentlemen. If you hear and you've got a hurt or have it or hang up in your life, you can't just shake it. You can't do nothing about it. I know somebody can. And I want to introduce you to him today. His name's Jesus Christ. We don't have all the talk. You need to come to the altar, come on up here. You need to do it one-on-one. -on -one. There it is. We ain't gonna run up and grab you, shake you, and scare you. Because God we serve don't scare nobody. You do one-on-one -on -one business with God. If you don't know how, you ask me, you ask somebody, we'll pray for you. Does anybody here want to come to the altar now? We, we invite them right now. There's one. There's plenty here in Egypt. I want to encourage you to. Did the church say it? Amen. Thank y'all for coming. Come to the lake tomorrow. Bring you a seat. We're ready to eat. We'll have a lot of good food. <laughs>